name is Brian Caffo, and welcome to this week's episode of Fully Cloudy, where I go over some of my trials and tribulations with trying to create, uh, trying to do data science in the cloud. Um, remember to sign up for our newsletter, Monday Morning Data Science. I try and put out one of these videos every week. This week, I'm going to talk about installing Keras and in doing it on a Chromebook through our our studio. So I'm going to go through the whole process. I have some scripts you can just use. So I've gone ahead and created on DigitalOcean an instance. Um, there it is. And here I am logged into the instance right there. Okay, so the first thing, if you go to uh, my GitHub page, um, I have BCAFO DigitalOcean scripts. If you go down to the end, you want to set up an RStudio server. This will now set it up as an RStudio server. It'll set up a Shiny server. It'll install a lot of the packages that you need, including Keras. But usually it's a good idea to add it. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is step through all the steps here and kind of describe what each of them are doing. So you want to add a new user uh, because it's just better to do this than work on, on root. So let's add a new user. Add user. Let's call our new user RStudio. And I'll make a password. And then, all right, there it is. Now let's see, um, I wanna add my new user to the sudo group. This makes it so that this new user can be a super user. Okay, and then I wanna log in as that super user. There I am. Now I'm, oh, oh I'm gonna switch back to my, my directory. Okay, now um, if you go, there's a script called setuprstudio.sh and I'll just go through it. First thing you have to do is you have to set up where our studio and Shiny are located. So I have them set here, but if you download the script, um, you know, make sure to set those things correctly first. Okay, there they're set, okay. Next thing we need to do is get R. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do then, oh, let me copy it correctly. Okay, and oh, gotta give it my, oh. There we go. Now, what I've done there is I've set up the, uh, I've set a, set it up so that it's getting R from the right location. Oh, and I don't think it got all of this last line. There we go. Okay. Now we want to update our Ubuntu instance there. This is just generally a good practice before you install packages to update. There we go. Now we're going to install our base and our base development. This will take a minute, so I'm going to stop the video for a second and then I'll come back in when it's done. Okay, now that R is installed, we can see that it's finished. There we go, right there. Good. Okay, let's go back here. Um, let's see. Now we installed R. We we're right there. Now, um, what this next set of code is used for is. Um, you know, when you create one of these DigitalOcean instances, you generally create one of these small instances that run at $5 and you leave it running at five, $5 a month until you need it, then you'll resize it if you need a big instance. We might as well leave it running or stopped. And especially if you're installing software, you might as well have it be a small instance. So you might need some extra memory. So this just uses the hard drive as extra memory, sort of RAM drive, if you need it. Um, I'm sorry, swap. Uh, it makes a uh, swap drive if you need it. Okay, and then we need things, uh, some basic uh, Ubuntu libraries that R and some of the more advanced R things are gonna need. Okay, so we'll install those. All right, that was pretty fast. Let's see, what was that? What was the last one? libcurl14, no, it didn't do all of them. Oh, oh there we go. We wanna make sure we get the XML one as well and the SSL one. Okay. And then we want to install DevTools and Shiny. Now DevTools actually takes a little bit to run, so I'm going to uh, cut out for a minute and then I'll come back as soon as it's done. 
Okay, so R has been installed, Shiny has been installed, or I'm sorry, DevTools has been installed. Let me see, where am I? There we go. Uh, now I should also install Shiny. Okay. Oh, there we are. Okay, so I actually probably shouldn't have done this, but I moved one of these lines up earlier in the script just to put all the uh, Ubuntu libraries together, but we also have to install this GW Core and Lib Paramore, Par Par Paramore 1. So, uh, there we go. We'll get those. Those will just take a second. And while there, it's done already. So we already installed DevTools and Shiny. Now we need to wget RStudio. Remember, we defined it up here. So we're getting here the preview version of RStudio server. Um, and then the preview version of Shiny server. There it's getting it. Now if I type ls, you'll see that the two dev files are there. And then I just want to install both of those. OK, so it looks like our studio server is running. And so if we, you know, let's find our uh, sbin if config. OK, so there's our internet address right there. OK, let's just check it out. Is it running? Uh, can't be reached. Oh, you know why? Because it's on port 87. There you go. Okay, I don't like that. Um, so what, uh, there we go, right here, I'm going to change the port to um, the port 80, so you don't have to type the 8787. Restart our studio. Okay, let me recopy my, okay, there we go. And then now it's just come in. Okay. Pretty much the first thing I always do. Let's go to options. Should probably just set this up so it automatically does this. And I like cobalt and font size 13 because my eyes are not so great. So there we go. I really like the terminal and the new terminal in the preview version of RStudio. The only problem is there's not a screen real estate in this smaller Chromebook that I have. So one thing I would suggest is just, um, you know, set PS1. You can change this in your Bash RC. So then you just have a little bit more uh, room in your terminal to type. Um, okay, let's uh, oh, let's go back. Let's go back to the scripts and see what else we do. Now we have to install Keras. Okay, so first let's install Keras. Okay. Okay. So now uh, Keras is installed. See, it says right here, done, done Keras. Okay. And then, so if we go back to our scripts, the next thing is you actually need the Python libraries that get called. So you have to install those. And then once you install those, you have to go back and then go into R and install Keras, but this just does this with the script. Okay. There we go. And then now you'll see, this is the part that actually kind of failed for me a bunch of times and maybe is the reason behind why I'm making the video. And I found out that um, the reasons, the biggest reasons for this failing, I've tried it a couple times and I found that the biggest reasons that I found for it failing is one is you weren't, if you weren't operating in R as a super user, then that seemed to cause it to fail. I mean, also, I think some of these um, are, uh, Ubuntu libraries need to be installed beforehand. And if you kind of don't have it all set up first, then it'll fail if you just kind of, uh, you know, go off just uh, a base R without some of these other uh, Ubuntu libraries installed, it seems to not work as well. Um, but here, it all the little bars went all the way up and I don't see any errors. And so TensorFlow should be good. Okay. Installation complete. Installation complete. So the last thing I have is just installing Markdown. So in a minute, I guess I'll try out my Keras installation and see how it works. Okay, so the Shiny server, um, there was actually a mistake when I was installing the Shiny server. So you have to run this GW command here um, to make sure that uh, the Shiny uh, program is actually installed, installed and you can just type Shiny server status and there's some error here I'm getting for some config file, but um, seems to be working anyway. Um, 
Okay, so there's this great web page by Dean Itali, who's a great resource about all this sort of stuff on DigitalOcean about how to set up a Shiny server on Ubuntu 14.04. Just Google something similar to that and this will come up. At um, any rate, you can see when you got it running, there's uh, at your IP address, sample apps, hello, there's an example running. There it is for this one. Let's just I'll refresh it just to show you that it's working. Okay. And so, all right, good. So we have our Shiny apps working. And then if we don't go to the 3838 address, it's going to take us to our our studio server, which is also running. Okay. Which I, I got to say the latest version of our studio server looks great. Okay. Last thing is to check out Keras, which is going to take a minute because we're going to have to resize our droplet. So we want to run uh, this example from the Keras uh, RStudio documentation, but our server is probably a little small to do that. Um, so let's resize it. Um, let's resize it maybe to, I don't know, eight gigabytes, eight dollars a month. Okay, but it's only 10 cents an hour. So it'll cost much less than say Roger Pang's pumpkin spice latte that he gets. All right, so I, I've got that. What else do I gotta do here? Resize your droplet. Oh yeah, turn it off. Turn it off. We don't have anything on there that matters too much to worry about shutting it off without thinking about it too much. Okay, just gonna take a second. There. Now I can resize it. Now the key thing when you resize it is you got to remember to unresize it, or you're just leaving a computer, an expensive uh, virtual instance, just running all the time. Okay, so now let's actually run Keras, and I wish this was a little bit easier than it uh, than it turned out to be. So when I tried to run Keras, uh, apparently there were install errors. So I had to do the following, and I'm not going to just reshow this, but I had to kind of fight with it a little bit. So um, I installed these um, Python libraries, um, again, at the command prompt. But then I manually, uh, first I upgraded pip, which is uh, Python's sort of package management system. And then I manually installed Keras, TensorFlow, and Theano. Okay, and then, so if you go to your terminal and you kind of do, you know, let's say pip list, um, it should, you know, you should see in there, you should see Keras, uh, Keras is right there, 2.111, you should see uh, TensorFlow, TensorBoard, Theano, so you should see all those things in there. Um, I had to do that manually, the install underscore Keras package in R apparently didn't work, though it appeared to work when I ran it earlier. Okay, so now let's actually try and run the example from the RStudio website. Okay, so I just copied the code here. Okay, and they're going to use this MNIST data set. So I'm going to library Keras. Okay, I'm going to download the data set. This is even the first step was failing when I, unless I did those things manually. Here's my uh, training and test data. So my Ys are my outcomes. So if you look at Y train, you see it's a bunch of one through nines. And my um, X, so dim X test. You can see it's, um, it's a bunch of images, a bunch of 28 by 28 images. Okay, so I'm going to reshape my data so that it's vectors. So 784, I'm guessing, is 28 uh, squared. Yep, there we go. So we're just reshaping those as vectors. And then uh, rescaling the intensities to be 0, 1. Okay, and then this is just changing the format in which our outcomes are, just sort of to... Um, Let's see, so dim, so it's changing it. So now it's an uh, indicator. So let's just, you know, let's just show you indicator of which category it is. Okay, then we are going to develop our Keras model. Boom. Summarize the model there. Okay, it's a nice little um, formatted output. All right, let's compile the model. Okay. But now let's actually fit it. Okay. And it'll show you the fitting. This is going to take a while. You can see it shows you some progress here. It's actually pretty cool. It's got a little interactive plot. It shows you the loss as, it go loss as it goes along. You know, here it's overriding. I was doing it before because I 
this is probably like the fifth time I've recorded this video because I was fighting so much with the uh, Python libraries, but now it seems to work. Um, I put all those commands, by the way, in the bash file. Okay, so keeps going. So maybe I'll stop now and just come back in when it's done. Okay, so it finished running and you can see uh, one thing that is pretty cool. It gives you this nice little interactive graphic about the algorithmic convergence. And then, so let's see, as an example, you can get the prediction, the predictions for the test data set out. And then, I mean, just maybe an easy way to look at this. Remember we reformatted somewhere up here, the Y test. So let me just grab the raw values of the test. Ah. Uh, the raw values of the test um, data set and compare them maybe just with like table the raw values and then the predicted values. Okay, so uh, not a ton. So in this example, you're predicting the handwritten digits. And in this case, not, you know, it's getting most of them if you look at it, not too many things in the off diagonal. So that's pretty good. All right, but the main point was showing how we could install the Keras package and actually get it to work. Um, we were sort of partially successful in that. The one thing I would emphasize in, that seemed to be very necessary were these um, uh, separate pip installs. And uh, so try it out yourself and let me know how it goes. And remember to turn that RStudio server back to a small instance when you're